Hey guys, it's Tay on Tech and I'm here with another video. Um, I haven't been as consistent on YouTube. A lot of things that have changed in my life within the past couple of months, but I have been consistent on TikTok. And that's only because TikTok doesn't require me to do as much editing and the videos are about 30 seconds. So it's not as much time and effort that I have to put into those versus the YouTube videos. But with that being said, if you do want to stay up to date with some of the things that I am doing on social media, you can follow me on TikTok at TayonTech. You can follow me on Instagram at TayonTech.io. And you can follow me on Twitter at TayonTech. And now that we got that out the way, let's get into today's video. I'm actually creating today's video due to the high demand from people on TikTok asking me to create a Q&A. So that is what I'm going to be doing. Today's video Q&A is going to consist of tech career advice, salaries, literacy, and pretty much anything that I normally talk about on social media. These are questions that's probably asked a ton and I may have or may have not answered it, but it just makes sense to create this video so you guys have a one-stop shop for anything that you may have to ask. And also, um, while you're at it, if there are any more questions that you do have for me, you can comment them in the comments below and I'll make sure to answer them once I get the chance to do that. But let's get into the video. So let's dive straight into this. Someone asked, this might be a dumb question, but how long after you got your high income job did you decide to get a nice place? And I've talked about this a lot on my social media, this thing called lifestyle creep. <laughs> the thing for me, I did not wait at all. I actually broke my college lease where my rent was about $700 per month to move into a high rise that was about $1,600 a month, increasing my expenses by $900 immediately. Then I went and bought a new car right after, like a month after that. So for me, I did it immediately, but that is not the way to do it. If I could go back and go do it again, I would de definitely have waited maybe a year or so. Cause the thing was, my car was actually almost paid off. I think I had like $800 left to pay off on my car and I had $700 for rent and I only had like six months left on that lease. So it was kind of dumb. I enjoyed it, but that was very much so pretty dumb. But I'm here now, I learned from my lessons and you guys can learn from my lessons as well. So I always tell people, wait at least a year before you um, increase your expenses. You wanna make sure you have a safety net, you wanna make sure you have a cushion and you don't wanna be living paycheck to paycheck because that's not fun. That defeats the whole purpose of why you increase your salary. Okay, so the next question is, what's my opinion on job hopping for better pay in a company's bringing up? And companies bringing up it, I don't know what he's trying to say, it, but I'm just assuming he's asking, what's your opinion on job hopping? My opinion on job hopping, for me, I never really leave a company due to like pay because I know any company within the tech industry, they're gonna pay me a decent salary. So that's usually like the least of my worries whenever I am job, job hopping. It's mostly because like a manager, that's most of the times the reason why I'm leaving a company or it's just overall, they're probably not investing enough money in the um, cybersecurity program, successful. But nine times out of 10, if I'm leaving a company, it's due to my manager. And honestly, I've really only had one bad manager career. The managers have been pretty good. I believe this is the third question. And this is, what was your career path that led you to become a cybersecurity engineer? And um, I think I've talked about this on my social media. Um, at least I've talked about me being a security engineer, but I guess I haven't really talked about how I became a security engineer. So I originally started in college. Um, I was contracting for the staffing agency called Tech Systems. Um, I was a Linux engineer there. And it's actually kind of crazy because when I started working there, I literally had no experience in the industry whatsoever. Um, don't get me wrong, I had been doing like a ton of labs. I have been doing working with Kali Linux. I had been working with Ubuntu servers. And at the time I was also in a Red Hat Certified System Administrator class. So pretty much I had like all the experience or the fundamentals down packed to where I could do like the basic functions to actually do this job. But I had no experience to actually, cause there's, there's a difference between labs and then like an enterprise systems. It's completely different. Some of the things that you're gonna see within you know, like your home lab, you probably won't even touch in an enterprise level um, organization. 
So that was a bit different for me. So um, I started off doing that. I did that for two years, but I also as well, while I was working there for two years, I was also interning. So I had um, did like some network engineering work or network analyst work, I would say. And it was extremely boring. I was like, network engineering is so boring. And then I actually did an internship with Cisco. Well, network and scared, so network security. It was a mixture of both. And it was mostly me working with firewalls, um, routers, um, Cisco ICE, if you guys know what that is, as well as, um, I've, got the, I've got the name of the other system. But that was extremely boring. I had no interest in trying to do implementations or working with network security or anything like that. It was, it was pretty boring. And so that's when I kind of like, I think I believe I took my first cybersecurity class. And when I took that class, it was like, this is what I'm going to do. I fell in love with it. Like, I, that's when I found out you can hack and get paid for it. I was super obsessed with that. So that led me to stand up in the morning to two, three or four o'clock in the morning. Like I'm talking about pulling all nighters, researching this stuff, um, doing CTFs, um, capture the flags. If you guys don't know what that is, um, I was going to these hackathons. I was going to these conferences. Like I was trying to learn everything about security. And when that happened, it just, everything just started going well for me. Um, I believe the semester before I graduated, I received my first full-time offer company um, as a threat analyst, which is basically just a glorified SOC analyst. I did that for about eight months. I didn't really enjoy working as a threat analyst because that's basically the same thing as I was doing within my internships. And I didn't feel like I was learning. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna leave. And just so happened, um, my uh, my manager from one of my internships was working for Booz Allen and he reached out and was like hey you know we're looking for you know individual we're looking for a uh, consultant uh, for Booz Allen like are you interested I was like yes <laughs> so I came on at Booz Allen as like a senior security consultant and that that right there I always say is like me working at Booz Allen was hands down the best experience I had received throughout my career because I touched so many different things um, I was doing architecture, I was doing like threat detection, answer response, uh, Splunk development. I was pretty much doing everything that you could think about. And for me, um, working there, I had all these different skills that allowed me to become a security engineer within my next role. And from there, I've been a security engineer. So I definitely say if you do have the opportunity to, to consult, depending on where you go, because sometimes when you go into like consulting roles, you're mostly just dealing with like Excel spreadsheets and you know, none of the fun stuff. But this this particular consulting role, I was actually hands-on. So it really allowed for me to be hands-on, really actually learn. So if you guys get the opportunity, do it. All right, guys, so my camera actually went dead and I had to wait a couple of hours because none of my batteries were actually charged. So yeah, as you see, new shirt, new all that. But anyways, back into the video. I think this question number four, I'm not sure. But anyway, someone asked me, am I gonna need a degree to go into this field? And I actually get this question a lot and I've answered it a lot. So I'm not sure why I keep getting this answer, but you know, I ask it again because I had like 10, 12 people to ask me this. So to answer your question, no, you do not need a degree to get into the technology field. You don't need a degree to get into cybersecurity. But what you need to do is have a passion and willingness to learn and yeah, really learn. And most of the time people are going to ask like, how am I supposed to get this skill set or how am I supposed to be able to learn these things if I don't go to college? For one, most of the time when you go to college, the information that you're going to be learning regarding technology is most likely going to be outdated anyways. But there are some free tools and some things that you can use to learn the skill sets that you need to be a software engineer, cybersecurity engineer, or whatever it is that you wanna do. YouTube has been one of them. You can probably most likely find anything that you wanna find regarding any of these industries on YouTube, YouTube University. Next up is Google. That's, you can find a ton of free resources on Google. But if you do want to pay for a course, you can pay for getmeintech.com. And you know, there, you know, there we go. <laughs> My TikToks and stuff like that. I give away like a lot of free content. So, um, if you have been following me in like the last couple of weeks or even months, I've been doing this thing where I actually now I talk about all the free resources that are available for anyone that want to get into cybersecurity or even tech sales at this point. But 
yeah man like you know check it out i have a link in the description for all of those resources as well too okay now this is a very interesting question that i received and i see a lot of people that ask me this as well too so i'm glad this person asked me this question hey i just received my security plus does this mean i'm not qualified to work into cybersecurity, or how long will it take me to get a cybersecurity job all right i'm glad that question was asked because i like to tell people this all the time just because you just got a certification that does not mean you're qualified to do the job that basically tells the hiring manager or whoever you're interviewing with that hey this person has a basic understanding of what security is actually implement the things that you learn into a real world um, situation and most of the times individuals can't really do that because they're so focused on passing the certification test they don't really bother to actually learn the skill set that they need to perform the job and when i tell people this i typically tell them don't worry about the certification focus on the skills that you need to learn and once you actually learn those skills and master them the certification is going to be the easiest thing that you can do the thing is if you can do it hands-on you can for sure pass the test i like to try to equip um try to say like certifications are equivalent to degrees in a sense like just because you have a degree in this certain field doesn't mean you qualify it just means hey you went to school you studied and um you got a piece of paper that said oh you got a degree and that's basically what certifications are doing so someone asked me what are my responsibilities as a senior security engineer and that is actually a great question because depending on where you work in what industry in the tech industry you work in your your role and your responsibility is going to be different for me it just so happened i've been blessed to been able to work in like you know big tech companies so i'm mostly um responsible for detection and response as well as inside threat most recently um, i've been building that inside threat programs for some time now so now I'm just carrying on the experience that I have in my previous companies to the company that I'm at right now. And with detection responses, if you don't know what that is, basically I'm the guy that create the alerts that alert us on if there's malicious activity within the company. So you have to think when you have thousands of employees of hundreds of employees and terabytes of petabytes of data, I'm the guy that creates the, the indications or the alert mechanisms to find any of the information within the network, which can be tedious because I have to correlate a ton of different data sources. And you, if you have never seen logs, like raw logs, or just seen all the information at one time, you can kind of see sometimes how it can be stressful or how it just can be time consuming, but it is fun. I like to call myself a data junkie because anytime I'm breaking somewhere, the first thing I'm going to go do, I'm going to go look at their logs. I'm looking in like their SAMs and I'm trying to see what type of information are they gathering already. That's something I always love to do. But in short, you know, that's basically what I'm doing right now. I'm building out those capabilities and um, I'm actually enjoying it right now. So yeah, that's what I do. Okay, so this, this person asked me two questions and so I'm gonna answer them as well too. So I said, what languages do I know and which one do I learn? did I learn first? When you ask me what languages I know, I'm going to assume you're talking about as far as like code and fluently, but I know Python and that's it. I mean, I know shell script, bash script and stuff like that, but that's really the only thing that I really have to use. Now, what language did I learn uh, first? That was C++. And I think that's everybody's first language. Just honestly, if you um, if you went to school and you know you had some type of programming class or anything like that, uh, C++ was the first language I I learned. But outside of like the simple things that you can do, I don't really know C++. Like I understand the syntax and all of that, but outside of that, I don't really know it. But they came back and asked me another question. They said. What are my reasons for creating content to provide value or fun to give others help you wish you had? Like what motivates me to post? And I really enjoyed that um, particular question because no one's really asked me that. And I would say the reason why I create this content is basically what you said. Um, during my time trying to get into the tech industry, I had no guidance whatsoever. I didn't know what to learn. I didn't know what to expect. I literally was just, you know walking blindly in the tech industry with no help or anything like that and i noticed just like a couple of years ago that i wasn't the only person or only individual that was kind of going through the same thing as well too and so as time went on i was like you know what i'm going to create content on twitter so 
back then, this was like four years ago, you know, Twitter was kind of like the hot thing. It still is actually. And I used to create all these threads just kind of like giving people insight of some of the things that I was dealing with and how I overcame them. And then, you know, TikTok and Instagram kind of blew up with like the videos and then it just seemed like video was the better way to get out the information that I wanted to do. So I decided to create videos. And then, you know, sometimes I create funny videos or comedic videos regarding the information that I um, like to talk about in the tech industry. Because most of the time when I am talking about the information that I like to talk about on TikTok or Instagram, um, people don't really like pay attention to it as much because like I'm not doing any of the gimmicks or I'm not doing anything to just really make them laugh. So I just thought, you know what, sometimes I'm gonna create like, you know, little funny TikToks regarding the tech industry. But while I'm doing that, I'm also gonna put like, you know, important information on those TikToks. So, you know, I'm kind of entertaining them as well too, but I'm also providing great information. So that's overall why I decided to kind of create content. Um, I honestly just wanna help people get into the tech industry. And that's honestly why, like a lot of things that I do, I do it for free. Even like the content that I create on YouTube, even like the labs that I'm starting going to do on YouTube, because people, the people that actually wanna get into the industry and make a difference, I fully don't mind helping you out. It's kind of just like those individuals that think that getting to the tech industry, specifically the security, is gonna be an overnight thing, and that's not what it is. Um, don't get me wrong, like over time, it's definitely worth doing it, but if you think you're just gonna get rich, get rich quick in this industry, it's not gonna happen. It's gonna take a lot of hard work, and so that's just my advice to you guys, and basically why I do this. All right, with that being said, um, those are all the questions that I'm gonna answer for right now. Um, I plan on doing these Q and A's probably once a month, just because I know I get a tons of questions in my DMs, um, on my videos and all that. And I do wanna make sure that I answer these questions, but sometimes I overall just do not see them due to the amount of DMs, comments, and all the other things that I do receive on social media. But if you guys do enjoy this, and enjoy the things that I do within my YouTube, TikTok, or Instagram content, you know, comment below some things that you would like for me to talk about, some videos that you would like to see, and I will do my best to make those videos. Peace to next time and um, look forward for my next video. It's gonna be an office tour. Um, I finally got my new chair in, shout out the Uplift Desk. Um, I will make sure you guys get the information and descriptions about that as well too. And I also have some other things I need to do as well. So I should be done with that by the end of the weekend. You guys should have a video by next week sometime or the week after that. But overall, I plan on having another video before the next two weeks out. Peace.